Hey guys, how are you doing? It is Catherine and it's day 24 of Designer December. Sorry, I know that it's like a month late, but we got there in the end and this is a really fun one because what we've done, it's not just one set of images, it's a whole bunch of elements that you guys have been requesting. So it's pretty much request day. A few things before I start showing you the new additions to Tangent Templates. First of all, I want to say huge, huge thank you for the response to the video we made about Canva. If you missed it, great news. You are now able to use Canva images for KDP. So I made a whole big video about that and also about how you can customize Tangent Templates using Canva, which is just such a great thing to do because you can add color, you can add your own images, you can just mix and match the two tools. They work really, really well together in that way. So do check out that video if you've missed that. I also want to say that this is absolutely not the end of our updates. So although this is technically day 24 of Designer December, our plan with that was to give you a few images and a preset each day. It kind of evolved into being a whole bunch of images each day. What we're planning on doing now, we do still want to add more presets, so look out for that. And we have just a ton of things in the works. So stay tuned. We have a lot of things planned. And now we're kind of finishing up with this Designer December. We can move on with some of those. So do watch this space. We have a lot of things hopefully coming soon over the next few months. And also keep your requests, ideas, suggestions coming. You can always contact us, support at tangent.rocks. We're doing our best to put everything in there. And we know there's so much you guys want. We don't blame you. We want to put all those things in there too. Do keep the suggestions, requests coming. We do our best to read them all and to add what we can. Bear in mind, it's pretty much Isaac and me. So we're, we're working as hard as we can to add as much as we can to Tangent Templates. Um, so let's get on with it. Let's take a look at what we have added for day 24. So today, we have put in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a whopping seven folders full of images. And I think the big one that you guys are going to like is we have now added all our paper game elements to the interior designer. So as you know, if we go to Tangent Templates, way back, I, I don't remember when it was, we put paper games into Tangent Templates. And I know this has kind of taken off. I see people selling paper game templates everywhere. But we added them, I think we added them first to Tangent Templates. We put these images out there, these templates out there. And what we've done today is given you all the separate elements. So the little hangman, the hexagons for the hexagon game or game of sim as it's also known the sea battle grids, tic-tac-toe, all of those things we have included in the interior designer. So we've given you these elements all separate. So what's nice about this is you can mix and match these on a page or you can put just a whole set of them. So you can make a whole page of tic-tac-toe or a whole page of connect five or hexagon. Sea battle, that's probably not a good example of sea battle because you need to have the actual ships on there. But just to sort of show you how you can lay this out, and look, we even gave you the little boat for sea battle or battleships as it's sometimes called. But be careful with battleships because it's a trademark. So let's take a little bit more of a look at this. So we also added some new games. So Hangman you're familiar with. What we did with this, we actually put alphabets in here. So you have different layouts and styles of alphabet. So let me just show you a couple of those. You can see here we've done several styles of alphabet there you go this one has three rows and is in sort of the the big block font we also have the more comic style font we have two rows if you wanted to put your your letters underneath kind of like we did here we've also given you that option as well so you have this style of letter here as well where it's on two rows so we've really tried to give you all the elements these lines I created using the dotted line. I guess the way people would do it is that they will sort of draw underneath the lines to say what their phrase is that they're doing. 
or you could just leave these lines out and let people put the dashes in themselves. So you've got Hangman in here and we had fun. We added some new elements, some new games to this. We have also added Paper Golf. Now this is such a fun game. You can play it on your own or with friends. The idea with Paper Golf is really, really simple. All you actually need to play Paper Golf is to have a hole. So this is our hole. It's got a little flag. You draw the hole somewhere on the piece of paper. So the great thing with this is you can kind of create little golf courses for people. So there's our hole, which is the essential element of paper golf. And then what the player does, and so you can play it one person. If one person's playing, they just draw their T, which is like their starting point on the paper. So most people just do either a cross or a small box to represent the T. There you go. You can see I put a cross on here. And then what the player does is they put the pencil on the X and they close their eyes and then they draw lines to get to the hole and hopefully their ball gets to the hole. So it's basically, can you draw lines with your eyes closed and get to the hole, get your ball into the hole? And what you do if you're playing it with more than one person, you play with different colored pens and you take it in turns and see who can get to the hole in the least lines. I'm sure you can think of different variations on this, but what I did with this is to add some sort of fun to it and to add a bit of creativity to it. I added obstacles. So we actually included these. These are just sand bunkers and I put those in the folder in the paper games. So you can see you've got several styles of flag hole that you can use for your paper golf game. And then those are some sand bunkers. So you can see I've used those there or sand traps as you call them. And these images, the windmill and the tree, I actually got from an older folder in here. They were in the outdoor icons. Actually, no, it was the map icons. There they are. So there's the map icons. And somewhere in here, there is a tree. There it is. That's the tree I used. There's also that style of tree. Of course, there's like a little windmill in there and you can add anything you want. I mean, you could have like someone running across uh, the golf course. You could have a castle, like you can really tailor this to whatever you want. And also guys, think about the concept because it doesn't have to be golf. Like what if you had two little cars and then you had to race cross country to the finish line? That's actually why I made the flag look uh, a little bit like a, a car flag as well. A car flag, a racing flag. So you could actually play it with sort of little cars instead of being golf. Like you can reskin this game any way you think. You could have dodge the robots, like play with your friend and draw lines to get to a certain area and dodging the robots. And you could use all the images we have of like robots and monsters. So there's a lot of ways you could actually recreate this game. And instead of calling it golf, call it something else and have a different game. Great way to niche it in your coloring books or your activity books for kids. So there you go. We've added paper golf. Oh, and also what I should say is in the paper games. So here are our paper games. We have done something really cool. We've added game instructions at the bottom. So if you click here, if you've totally lost me, as I explained to you how to play paper golf, don't worry. You can click here. Click on Paper Golf and boom, I've given you some notes here about what you can do with it. I've also said that you can make a similar game as Paper Archery or Car Racers or Reach Your House and use the same gameplay. And I've included instructions that you can include in your book. Now, I don't mind if you want to include the instructions as they are. We pretty much are giving those to you to include in your book as is if you want them. You can just copy and paste that. So if you really want to, you could just literally copy this and then add a new page in the interior designer and add some text and paste that in. Oh, probably want to make that a little bit smaller. So if you want to include the instructions like that, you can absolutely do that. I don't recommend using them as is just because I think it's better to have your own unique book. So I would recommend actually editing this a little bit just to put it into your own words or to explain how you're using it in your book. So if you're having like paper motorways or paper highways where you've got little cars instead of golf, 
then you could adapt it and, and say something like that. So there you go. We have included the instructions for all of these games. We've also added, let's see, we've added fortune tellers. So I don't know if you guys remember when you were kids and you had like origami, you got a big square of paper and you folded it up and then you went up to your friends and were like, okay, R-E-D, pick a color, R-E-D. Okay, pick a number, one, two, three, four, five. And then you open it up and there's like a happy message inside. This is basically that. This is something that people can cut out of the book. They can write their messages on these blank triangles and the corners, you can color those in. So you can make them red, blue. I think it's usually red, blue, orange, green. So you can put colors on them or you can get really creative and you could go and find maybe some kind of icon or picture and include that on there. So I don't know, maybe you can make like a pretty butterfly one and then people could choose which butterfly they want. So you can really customize this as you want to. I put these messages on there, the enjoy life, be happy. You can include it without those messages. You can let your readers add their own messages or you can put something on there for them. Think about niching it as well. Like if you, you're making a book for boys that's all about, I don't know, computers, maybe you want to put like funny computer jokes in there. You can really sort of explore different niches with this fortune teller and have some fun with that. If you're worried about people chopping up the book, you could just tell them to trace it or copy it and just use it as an example. But it's a really fun thing to include in activity books. Another game that we have included in here that's new, we've included Bingo. So Bingo is really, really fun for travel games especially. So if you're making a book of, of travel games or like games kids can play in the car, Bingo is a really, really fun one. I've made several versions of the bingo card. This one actually has room underneath to put text. So what I recommend, you can either put the bingo cards in and encourage your reader to draw or write in what they want in there, or you can do it for them. There's so many ways you can use this. So you can use images. I, again, I really like using the icon pictures we have. The icons are here. The outdoor icons and map icons are really, really good for this. So if you're making a travel bingo, you can go and get, if you see a bus, for example, you could put the bus in there. And then you can put text that says bus. And I'm gonna make that white so that I can put it there. And you can change the color of the bingo card. If you want it to be higher contrast, you can make it black. I kind of like this shade that's slightly not really black black. So you, you see, you can fill this in with different images and different text. We also included a version of the bingo card. We also have a version that doesn't have space to write in. So if you just want to include that and just put images, you can totally do that. You can also use this for like more adult books. Think about drinking games, for example. So I don't know, maybe you're watching like a political debate. So you could add text to be like every time someone yells. So you could put yells. I'm going to put someone yells. So you can kind of create like drinking games with this. Be like political debate bingo. There's a lot of ways to use bingo cards. They're a really fun thing to add to journals, to activity books, to pretty much any kind of low content book. If you're a coach or you teach people, you could use bingo in an educational book as well. You could use it to encourage good habits. Like every time someone invests in their business or invests in their skills, you could use bingo that way. So lots of ways to use the bingo card. So that's paper games. We have added a ton of paper games, as you can see. So you've got paper golf, bingo, pipe layer we've added. That's a new one. And again, you can get the instructions for this. Just scroll down to the bottom of the images and click game instructions. And it will tell you how to play pipe layer. And we've given you several variations. So if you just want a quick game, you can include the quick small board there. If you want to have a quick game, you can just use this one. If you want to have a longer game, then you would pick the bigger board like that. 
So that's another really fun game to just throw into your journals, activity books, especially into books for kids. Let people play games like Pipe Layer, Dots and Boxes, Connect 5. There's just a whole lot of different games you can add in here. Yay, paper games. All right, let's look at what else we have been adding to the interior designer. As we've been scrolling through these, you might notice that we have some pictures of people. We have added a whole bunch of just awesome portraits. What we've tried to do with this is give you some really diverse images, all kinds of people doing different actions, different things that you can use in your templates. So I love this lady. She's just got an amazing attitude. I included her on this page, which also I put a fashion vision board. And this would be really fun for just planning your outfits for the week. I put in labels here like clothes, outerwear, accessories, shoes. And I just, of course, grabbed the vision board. We have a whole folder somewhere here. There it is. So you can grab one of these vision boards and add a character like this, and you're pretty much ready to go with that as a template. So this is just one, two elements and a little bit of text and you have a page of your book. You can also use these sketches for something like this. I, I really like them for the mindfulness pages. We put this guy on here. So if you are making a book for people who are kind of struggling with something, not feeling great, they're going through maybe a difficult process, like trying to beat an addiction or trying to improve themselves or feel better about themselves. You could put in a page like this. I included this as a page about loneliness. So I just put feeling lonely, people I can connect with, positive self-talk, how I feel right now. And then I added some emojis so you can track your mood after you've tried doing these things and see whether your mood's improved. And then I put a note, if you're in crisis, you can text a hotline. You could include this in all kinds of different books. Like this would probably be a really good page to include in a book for teenagers, maybe. Or if you've been using our mindfulness templates. So again, you could find the mindfulness templates over here in the template packs. These would be really good to sort of mix and match in with pages you design yourself in the interior designer. So again, we use a sketch, uh, a person, and let's take a look at some of these. Here's one more that I made and I put this lady in it. I just think she's awesome. I, I love her style. This would be great for a vacation journal. And you might notice here that it has this date line at the top and we put in a folder as well as the people, we put in a folder of date lines. And I'll show you that in a second. Before I do that, let's add another page. And I'm just gonna show you some of the people that we've included. So if we go to people, you can see we've got a lot of different styles here. So this would be really good for like a makeup design page. If you wanted to draw on makeup ideas, you could use an image like this with this face. It would also be good for any kind of sort of beauty or maybe thinking page. If you're sort of writing down thoughts, you could perhaps use this to illustrate them. We've got some great images if you're doing shopping pages or just go out and get it pages. Like I love this lady. She's just walking across the street with great style. We've got this guy. He's very 2021. He's got the cool beard. Perfect for like a men's journal, a style journal for men. We've also got some children in here. There's this girl reading a book. We've also got a girl writing in a book. I think you might have seen that in the paper games. We were just looking through those. We also have people doing yoga, exercising. This guy's pretty cool. He's doing some yoga here. So if you're doing a fitness journal, you can use these pictures. This girl you might recognize. I think we used her in one of the mindfulness templates before. So she looks pretty awesome. We also have some beautiful style pictures. These work really well for just any kind of page you might be creating. If you're making sort of books about maybe manifesting, wealth, fashion, anything like that, we've got some really stylish images. That would be a nice one to add. We've really tried to be diverse with shape, size, gender, race. We, we wanted to include just a whole array of people that you might meet, that people that are probably going to be reading your books. And I hope you really enjoyed these images. We, we really enjoyed putting together this collection for you. 
I think they're really, really useful to put in pages. And I mean, something like this would be great for a coach book. Like you could go and take from the comics we've used, from the comic book elements, you can do things like get a speech bubble and see, we can flip that around, maybe make it a bit lighter. And you can be like, you can put text saying, welcome to the course. There we go. So these are really versatile images. You can use these at the front of a book. You could use them as chapter dividers, but they really do add some character. People always like to see people. It gives your book a bit more personality. So I hope you really enjoy using these and exploring these people images. A couple more examples. I love this one. This is like a very customized planner. I called it Girl Go Get It. That would probably be the name of the planner. It'd be like the Girl Go Get It planner. And the idea with this, you've got the girl looking awesome. Some people like to color, like having images like this works really well in a, in a book that people are likely to color. They could just color it when they're bored. They can track things like how much water they're drinking. Each time they say their affirmations in a day, they could color in one of these hexagons. And we have weather trackers. And guys, I have to share this with you. This is another new folder today. We've put these little weather icons in and they are just like the cutest thing. Let's take a look at these uh, weather icons. We go to weather. You can see we've got little umbrellas, uh, little clouds and sunshines. I like the tornado. The tornado just, that's, that's the cutest tornado I've ever seen. But you can have fun with these. I mean, you could put these on a calendar. You could replicate them several times and color them in each day it rains. Um, so you could have a rainy day tracker. Like there's all sorts of ways you can use these weather icons. We've also given you the faces. So you can use these same faces on pretty much any other element you can find in here. So if there's like, a, I don't know, a coffee cup and you want to put a face on it, you can just grab this face and add it to pretty much any of our images. And you can even do things like this. I don't know, if we go and look, if I go to maybe map icons, we take the car, make the car black, we can make the face white and make it a bit smaller and send to the front. Like you can even put a happy face on a car. <laughs> there you go. You can really experiment with the faces and put them on pretty much anything you like, any of the other elements that you want to. So we have added, there we go, we have added these weather elements today. And I just, I think they're super cute. If you're not sure about the faces, we've also included some blank ones that don't have faces on. So you can use these for just all kinds of projects. But I really like these ones. I think the weather elements are just really, really cute. Okay, so let's revisit date lines. I just told you that we added a folder of date lines. Well, this is kind of a complex date line. This has three levels, but really if you add this to the top of a journal, you add this date line to the top of a journal, people can fill in or circle any of these elements to keep track of what day it is. So it's kind of a quick way of not having to write the date. They can just go, okay, it's Monday, it's February the 4th. And they can just underline it or circle it and keep track of their diary that way. And I'll show you some of those. I'll make a new page to show you. If we go to blank and I go to images and date lines, you can see we've done this several ways. So you've got just the days of the week. If all you want is the days of the week, you can stick that at the top of your page. And that works well on a planner. You can also team it up with our checklists and tables and put it at the top of those. So if you just wanted something quick at the top of a planner to keep track of what day it is, you can just include that. If you wanna add more information, you can go down here and grab uh, the months of the year. And if you want to get the date, then of course we also have the numbers here. So you can build your own date line, make it look however you want it to look, or you can just grab one of the ones that we've already done for you. So this is just a fun thing to do in journals. 
some people who make like really older fashion looking journals, especially in like business or academia, sometimes like to use these just because it's a way of having really a dateless planner or a dateless journal because people can circle their own dates on that. So we've also added today, we've added these date lines. So I hope you can have fun with these. As you can see, there's four versions that are ready made for you at the bottom. So you can make them as big or small as you like. They should work on smaller pages as well. This is on a US letter page. So although it looks a little bit small on the screen, when you print this out on your book, it's going to be clear enough. You're going to be able to see it there. We've added a couple more things. So let's go back to our pages. Another thing that we added, I think you guys are going to like this, we have added video game elements. So I made a little planner here featuring various video game elements. In the past, you may have heard me talk a bit about gamification. And I think if you actually search Catherine gamification, I've put one of the videos from Cultivate, my Cultivate course, I've put that live on YouTube. So if you go and search on YouTube for Catherine gamification. I've actually talked about this quite a lot in the past. One thing that's becoming really popular I'm noticing with journals is to really gamify processes. For example, if you're trying to learn new skills, one way you might want to do it is pretend like they're experience points, like you're in a Dungeons and Dragons game and you're leveling yourself up. I've seen that becoming quite a popular thing. There's several books out there where people are pretty much creating levels for themselves as they try and achieve different things, either physical fitness, learning a new skill, losing weight, whatever it is they want to do. People are kind of gamifying it by seeing themselves as a character in a game and looking at how they can improve themselves as a character or boost their skill sheet. So that's something you could do and use video game elements for that. I've kind of illustrated how you could do it here, that you could set rewards for yourself, like this would be a weekly planner. This page would signify a week in your planner. And what you can do is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you have these little images that kind of represent the theme of your day. And then you have your battles, your weekly battles. Like what battles did you win this week? What was difficult that you had to overcome? And then you've got magic. What magic did you do? What amazing things did you make happen? And then you've got rewards. Like what great things came to you this week? So you can really use these elements to symbolize pretty much whatever you want. I've also put the little coins here as a kind of ranking system down there. And also you've got the hearts, like your life. So maybe you can color these in to say how well you were feeling at the end of the week. Like how many lives left did you have at the end of this week? Or how much money did you make this week? You could sort of give these a number amount and be like, okay, well, this week I made, I don't know, if you made $500, you could color in all five of them. You can really play with these video game elements and do some fun things with them. And of course, we have put those in a folder here called video games. And these are just some of my favorite images that we've put into the interior designer. I think they're really, really fun. So there you go. There's video game elements or a new addition in here as well. So one more folder that we have added that I haven't talked about yet is books. Now, if you've followed bullet journaling at all, you'll probably have seen book trackers at some point. So book trackers are very simple. All they are is a collection of books and people... They usually do it at the beginning of a year, but they could do it at any point. They write on the books titles that they want to read this year. So I don't know, you would go through this. So again, remember this is on a US letter size piece of paper. So this is actually bigger than it looks on the screen. You would write in here all the books you want to read. So you could be like, I don't know, Animal Farm, Watership Down, like whatever books you want to read, you would write the titles onto these books. Or as you read the books, you could write the titles on. But I think the way most people like to do it is they write the titles on that they want to read. And then when they've read them, they color in the book. So there you go. That's how you can make a book tracker with this now. This is kind of one I made earlier. But this is actually a number of elements. So the book case is one element. And then these are like little clusters of books. You can see that's that's an element, that's an element. And then we've added some other fun little things that people could put on their bookshelf. 
So you can see I've really just arranged my own bookcase here. If I start a new page, you can just see quickly how I did that. So we choose a page, we go to images, and we go down to books, which is here. And then we've included four types of bookcase. So you've really got your choice to customize this. And then you'll go to images and you'll grab different books. So there we go. You can put uh, those books on there. You can put these books on and you can really make the bookcase look exactly how you want it to look. It's really easy. You just drag and drop the images on. You can also take images from elsewhere in the interior designer if you want to add something else. So I don't know, maybe you want to add uh, a chessboard. There's nothing to stop you going and grabbing a chessboard and just popping that on there as well. So I can make that darker. You can get as creative with this as you want and make your own book tracker here. Add whatever images you want to the shelves. And if you really want to get creative with this, you don't even have to use these for books. Like I'm looking at this, you could easily go to drinks, for example, create your own bar, like put some drinks on there and uh, talk about those. Say what you're going to drink later and you could put uh, the names of it and be like, okay, well, this is my margarita. So you can get as creative with these elements, with these images as you want to. So I do hope you'll have fun with them one last folder that we added and this is something you guys have requested it's called tabs we put a folder of tabs this is a tab element if we go to images what we've done is created several styles of these and these are good to use with things like contacts a lot of people want to make address books with tabs or passwords another thing you might want to put tabs on and of course you can find password tables you can find these address tables they're all in the tables folder under images we've added these tabs and if i go if i scroll down here you can see the tabs are here. They're a little bit hard to see. I think we might look at whether we can do something to make those a bit clearer, but I'm just zooming in. I'm just using my mouse to zoom in on those so I can see them. What you can do is go and grab one of these sets of tabs. We've also included some blank ones that you can write what you want on. What we've actually done with the blank ones, if you include a blank tab there, let me put this here. These blank tabs, in fact, let me do this on a new page. So if I grab one of these blank tabs like this and put that on the page. Now you're going to want to make sure you have your margins turned on. I actually turned my margins off. You want to have your margins turned on to make sure that the tabs are not going into the margin. There we go. So I'm going to include that like this. You can put your, your tabs at the side of the page and it just kind of adds that element that makes it look like you have your index down the side and what you can do with the blank ones is then you can go in and just grab one of these lines that's just letters and these are actually designed to line up together so you can put the letters here we go you can put the letters onto the tabs like that so you can really pick your style. You can pick your style of letter and also your style of tabs and put those together. Some of you have been asking for tabs that actually go off the edge of the page. I kind of cheated it. And what I did was I drew a gray box and I put that gray box so it goes all the way across into the bleed area, into the edge of the page. So I'm gonna show you how that looks. If I show you the margin, there's the margin that gray will bleed right into the margin. So it should go right to the edge of the book. And one thing I want to say about this, never have anything orphaned in the margin. So never put like a single letter or a single number or a single element that is just in the margin and doesn't go into the main body of the book. So what I mean here is don't, for example, put like a letter that's way over here in the margin on its own. Because if you do that, KDP might reject your book. If you're going to have something leaking into the margin, make sure it goes into the main body of the page as well. So I kind of cheated this and just put this gray box all the way across here. So if you're flipping through the book, hopefully you would be able to see that that gray 
is at the edge and people will be able to see that that's probably a B. I mean, of course you can't really do real tabs with KDP, but this is kind of a way you can get the aesthetic of it. And if this is helpful, we're gonna look at whether we can maybe make some kind of widget for you that might do this for you. We're kind of playing around with that and we might look at if there's a better way to automate this. But for now, this is how we suggest you do tabs. So you just do a gray box and then uh, you put it over whichever letter you want to highlight in your book. So that's how you can create an address book. It's something that you guys have been asking for. Let us know your thoughts and your feedback, how we can improve this. As I say, we're looking at automating it and we have a whole lot of things planned for tangent templates over the coming months. So there you go. I think we have gone over everything there. So we added seven new folders today. We added tabs, datelines, people, books, weather, paper games, and video games. It really was a bumper giant collection of folders today. Over the month of December, we added so many images. You can see here all the images that we added. You've had trackers, calendars, butterflies, Christmas, characters, icons, just so many different things that we have added. The postage and mail, I love those images. Tarot, vintage pictures, like don't overlook these. There's just dozens of really beautiful images in the vintage illustrations. We've tried to just keep adding beautiful pictures here, high quality pictures and elements. At the moment, as we've mentioned, if you want to add color, you want to add your own pictures, what we recommend is creating your template in tangent templates like this, and then using a tool like Canva to add those elements. I made a video about this last week and uploaded it. It's getting a lot of views and a lot of interest. So thank you so much for your feedback on that. I'm glad it's been helpful. If you have any questions, you have any suggestions, you need help with anything in Tangent Templates, always send us an email, support at tangent.rocks. Isaac and I always, we want you guys to succeed and we do our best to answer everything and help with anything we can. We hope you're enjoying this. We hope you're enjoying using these images. We're really grateful for the feedback you gave us over December. And as I say, we've got a lot more things to come. So watch this space. All right, guys, have a very happy new year. I hope 2021 is good for all of you. And I hope you enjoy using tangent templates. All right, guys, bye.